everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Kendra. I'm the curatorial uh, assistant in the exhibition department at the Racine Art Museum. Today we're going to be touring Cultural Reflections Ram Community Art Show at Ram's Wisdom Museum. This exhibition opened June 15th and will be closing on August 13th. Um, this year's theme for the exhibition was on cultural connections and traditions. Um, this can take many forms, including food, literature, dance, craft forms, and visual art. Are we having technical difficulties? <laughs> yes, okay, we're going to pause while we straighten those out real quick. Sorry, everyone, please bear with us. Okay, we might be getting a thumbs up. How's it looking? Yeah? Okay. All right. Thank you, <laughs> everyone. Um, so this year, this show is shown just through our low, lower level at Worcester. Um, while upstairs, we have an exhibition titled Racine Art Guild Jury Competition 2022. Um, that uh, This exhibition, though, showcases 86 artists, and each person could submit one piece into the show. This isn't a juried exhibition, so anything that was submitted was welcome to be shown. Um, so this could include people such as class participants, teachers, museum staff and volunteers, and Racine school teachers. And then we also invited the Black Arts Council of Racine um, to invite their artists to have some show. That's actually the gallery we're in right now. So the BACR is a nonprofit organization that promotes and encourages African American cultural enrichment activities for individuals and families. With me today, our co-host is April Harris, who is the president and CEO of the BACR. So we're going to start off the tour first with April giving us a little glimpse at the BACR's work. We're going to switch over our microphone, so Tyler is going to give you a quick view of this gallery, and we'll be right back with you. Hello? Okay, we're good. Okay, go ahead. Hello. Hi, everyone. My name is April Harris. Again, I am the president and CEO of the Black Arts Council of Racine and um, going to talk about some of the artwork. I'm standing um, in front of my piece of artwork, and then there's others around and uh, that's representing the Black Arts Council of Racine that's here at Westham um, of uh, black artists uh, that submitted their artwork for the show. Um, so this is my piece behind me. A little bit about it. It's um, about, um, it represents a father and his son, and um, I wanted to do, I do a lot of pieces on women and children and things like that, so I wanted to represent um, a father and son and how important it is for a father to be in their child's life as well. So we got the painting of the father uh, admiring his son, and then over here to the side here is uh, uh, animals, the elephant and lion and giraffe um, and zebra prints that represents the spirits um, of the ancestors that um, brings them to the circle of life, which is the name of the piece, Circle of Life, and I created it with acrylic gold leaf and uh, graphite. So that's my piece. Um, so over here is a piece done by Autumn Kyle. Autumn Kyle is actually my daughter. She's 16 years old, um, and it's called Filling Myself. Um, that's she did this piece with colored pencil and acrylic. Um, and plastic beads and things like that. But yeah, this is Autumn Kyle's piece. And then over here is Kira Wilson. Kira? <laughs> yes, Kira is actually um, 
uh, uh, Horlick High School student, and this is her senior year this year. She'll be going to college in Madison for art. Um, she has a scholarship to go to Madison College for art, and this is her piece called Blessed, and it's uh, paper, graphite, pastel marker, and acrylic paint. Next is uh, Ralph Tunsell. He is um, a photographer um, in Racine. Um, so this is called Our Precious Great Grandson. So this is his great grandson and this is digital inkjet print. Next we have Shakira Wilson. She's also a Horlick High School student. I think she's a junior or a sophomore right now. And um, she has this self, uh, this piece is called Self Portrait. So this is a portrait of her that she did in graphite. And this piece is called Blues Road. It's created actually by my great uncle, um, Teddy Cozy. Um, and it's a digital print, but his work is actually, uh, his, he did a lot of his work in charcoal. So he's an artist in the family. So artists run in my family, of course, but um, he was uh, born in the 1930s and he passed away not too long ago, but he has a lot of pieces. They've been in museums before and things like that, but a lot of his pieces were done in charcoal. Here's a piece by Eloise Johnson called Tea After Working the Fields, and it's done in watercolor. And um, she uh, was an artist that she did a lot of artwork in watercolor. And this piece right here is done by Wernetta Smith um, or Wernetta Cozy. Um, also known as Renata Cozy. She, um, this is called Kente, and she did it in graphite. Um, actually, Renata, Renata Smith Cozy is actually my mother. And so, again, like I said, it runs in the family with artistic genes. <laughs> so, um, she actually, she does things like this in pencil or graphite, but then she does a lot of acrylic paintings as well. And she likes to create people. This next piece right here is done by a friend of mine. His name is Christopher Allen. It's a 3D, it's called 3D Hair Art. And um, he's also a hairstylist, so he kind of created uh, this art piece using hair, um, synthetic hair. And um, he put some gems and there's some digital ink print. This next piece here is done by Howard Brown. It's called Muddy, Muddy or Blood Mud. Um, it's done in acrylic paint and um, Howard is actually a poet. So he uh, submitted a piece um, of one of his poems and um, created some art with it.
This next piece is by Edna Colsey. She's actually another one of my aunts, so she's my mom's sister actually. But she created this piece with graphite and colored pencil. And it's called Afro Twins. And um, Annette also does uh, a lot of crafting and she's a seamstress. Um, and this is, she does visual art as well. This next piece is um, by uh, a young man uh, by the name of Jameer Duffy. He's 20 years old, and this is called Karan and Kobe. Jameer is, um, again, he's 20 years old. He is a college stu uh, art student in Illinois. He's actually from Illinois, and this piece right here is done in charcoal. But he's, um, he's pretty new to going to college, and he's uh, doing things in charcoal now, but we're looking forward to seeing more of his work. This piece right here is by Angel White. She is a student at um, in Racing Unified, and uh, she created this piece with acrylic paint, and it's called Eye of the Tiger. And she's an awesome artist, and she's also one of my uh, students um, that comes to my classes after school. This next piece is by um, Princess Ariana White. It's actually uh, Angel's sister, so she's an artist as well. She's about 10 or so. Um, this piece is called Africa. It's done with acrylic paint and marker. This piece is by uh, Charlie Johnson. He's my uncle. He does, um, it's untitled, but this is like a wood burning of, of some buffalo so soldiers. And then he does, um, it's mixed with watercolor and burnt on wood. But Charlie has a store as well with wood burnings in the market um, place on Rapid, Rapids Drive where he sells a lot of his wood burnings and wood carvings. This next piece is by uh, my son, uh, Tavis Franklin. You can also pronounce his name Tavis. Um, it's called Jazz Man, and it's an India, Indian ink, um, drawing or creation that he did. He likes music and things, so he created this jazz man creation. And this next piece is by uh, one of my aunts as well. Um, her name is Wenda Coltrane. She um, did this piece. It's called Queens, and it's done in acrylic paint. And we just discovered that she, um, not too long ago, discovered that she is an artist. So, like I said, it runs in the family, but she, um, she started creating again. This piece right here is by James Moore. He uh, created it in paper mache, and it's called Man. And it was actually a set. The other one was called Woman. Um, but he sold that piece, but this is just a piece to it. 
or the matching set. It's called Man and again done in acrylic or done in uh, paper mache. And this one is by Olivia Osborne, also known as Turquoise. Her piece is called Undressed. And it's done in acrylic and um, artificial gems. And um, Turquoise um, is also a poet and a seamstress. And of course, then she's a visual artist, multi-talented. And this piece right here is um, was created by Tanya Harris. She's my one of my sisters. It's called Stepping Out, and it's a piece that she created. Actually, you know, she um, did the skirt, and she made from extra material a purse, which is made out of cardboard, actually. And this piece right here uh, was, was created by James Stills. It's called Hostile Man, and it's done in ink. James Stills was one of my college professors at Gateway, and he's a retired college professor from Gateway Technical College. And this piece right here is by Tanya Allen. She's from Illinois. Um, the piece is called Aaliyah. And it's acrylic paint, fabric, gl fabric glitter, and found jewelry and synthetic eyelashes. She creates a lot of pieces, like bold, big pieces. And this is like a 3D, um, 3D 2D artwork. And she does a lot of those kind of pieces like that. And this next piece is by Linda Flagg. This is called Lady Blue Serenity. It's, it's created with acrylic and synthetic hair and eyelashes. You know, she found some earrings and yarn and, and created this awesome piece. Linda is, um, she's done art for some years and when she was younger, she's like, uh, she did art shows um, and she was a traveling artist, so she, she's done a lot of stuff with her art. And this, this last piece is cr created by uh, Robert Manning called Deep Purple. It's created with acrylic paint, acrylic paint marker, acrylic uh, chrome paint marker as well. And the Black Arts Council did a uh, art show for Manning last month um, at the Main Street Cafe. And he's also on Facebook with a lot of his work. And that 
that's it. Thank you guys and hope you come and visit and check us out. All right, thank you so much, April, for giving us that bit of tour. Now we're going to see the rest of the show. Um, this was just only the BACR stuff. Um, we're going to head to the front hallway. We do have classes going on right now, um, so you might hear some other voices, but we're going to go through that first. So the front hallway is where we historically have a lot of the smaller pieces of artwork. Um, just because they fit better here, we can keep an eye on them when people walk past. In the show, because there's a lot of cultural items, a lot of people took from their heritage in their past and they use different languages in their titles. So I'm going to do my very best to pronounce everything correctly, but I don't know how to speak many other languages. <laughs> so I do it with love. Um, we're going to start off right here um, with Mark Woolman's piece, Peshash Still Life 2022. It's a digital inkjet print. Mark um, comes from a Jewish tradition. So in his photograph, you can see that there's like a Passover display that's um, shown here, which is a major Jewish holiday. Next, we have a work by Susan M. Sorensen, A Plea of the World 2021. This is acrylic paint. On the piece you, itself, you can see it reads, where is the peace, tolerance, and compassion? Speaking to all the different kind of political climate that is around us in the US. Another thing you'll be seeing in the show that's kind of characteristic for us is we have a lot of double stacking. And that's just because, excitingly, we had a lot of pieces that were dropped off for the show, um, which means that we had less wall space. So usually we double stack works with the same artist. You won't be seeing that as much in the show. So on the top, we have Mickey Kruger's See You Soon 2022 Encaustic, which is um, a types, type of beeswax using pigment to create these pieces. And then below it, we have Karen Broman. We should have been there by now. 2020 watercolor ink and paper. You might have already seen this when April was taking us around, but underneath the labels, we have these little um, telescopes, which are a fun scavenger hunt that our education department created. And you can ask for it at the front desk and have a little fun scavenger hunt around the exhibition. In this piece, you can see there's a camel where, where it says the title, we should have been there by now, as well as three wise men um, alluding to Jesus' birth, um, and they, they can't find where he is. Excitingly in this show, since this is um, open to many different people that are as part of Ram's community, we have a lot of staff members in this show. So the first one or our front desk, this piece in particular is called Last Night, dot, 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 2020. It's made with ink, pastel, prismic color, color pencils, and graphite. Dee Dee actually also has a piece upstairs in the Racine Art Guild Jury Competition Exhibition. Um, Dee Dee is fun because she likes to work in a lot of different kind of media. So this piece, we have a 2D in this show, but upstairs she actually has a 3D sculpture of a horse that she made using found materials. Next, um, we have again a double stacking. The top piece is made by Deborah Klepp, Group Hug 2021, and it's made using acrylic paint. And below it, we have another staff member, Irene Cardozo, who is new to our Ram family. You'll probably see her pop up every now and then. Um, this piece is called Crude Roots, Rices Crudas. And um, this speaks about Irene's um, 
being born in Venezuela, and she migrated to the United States when she was seven. This piece is a retrospective a view of how the country has changed since she left. Um, she uses different mixed media in this to take on the effect of the petroleum industry within Venezuelan culture. She uses found pop culture references th spread throughout, including logos of some brands seen in Venezuela and national symbols, such as the Oriole and Orchid, both of which are covered and disfigured by oil. Due to the climate, the political climate of this country, she has not been able to return, but she hopes to one day. Next up, we have a piece by Alexander Greiveldinger, School of St. Louis 2022 Oil on Pastel. He also has a piece upstairs in the rig exhibition. Um, he uses oil on that piece as well, but it's pretty different content, so it's kind of fun to try and figure out which piece is his in both exhibitions. Next up, we have a little area of different photographs. Um, first up is another staff member who works often as the front desk um, at Wustum, she's here today. We have Carol's piece, um, patron saint of diner coffee 2021, and this is a photograph, like I said. Interesting contrast then to Carol's piece. Um, we have very two different photographs that you use different manipulations to create effects in their photos. The top one is by Wes Fallon, Light and Faith, 2021. And below it, we have a work known as The Drummer 2022 um, by John Bolton. You might recognize John's name because he is often the person that is credited for our Rams collection photographs that we use for different marketing, um, social media, as well as different prints. He created quite a fun piece. I believe it's of himself. He used to be a drummer and still does do drumming. Then we have a piece by Natalie Lang, who um, works at Wusum, um, mostly part-time now. This is called 7 2022 Oil Paint and Paper. There's seven different fish that she carved um, out of some rubber to create her own stamps, and each of the fish represent different family members. Um, it's pretty fun because she did a lot of research on the fish to figure out like their different personalities and traits and then picked the perfect fish for each of her family members. If you ever see her around, you got to ask her which fish is her, which is her parents, her siblings, all of that. It's a pretty fun story. Next up, we have two works. On top, we have Jill Casillo's All Are Welcome 2022 ink and watercolor. It's pretty fun to see the different variety of what people created for this show, what they took on to mean cultural traditions. Um, a lot of them are religious, such as this, this piece right here. And then below it, we have another um, grouping of people by Jean Sullivan. Ants and Cousins at the Beach 2021, and this is Watercolor and Gouache. Taken from the name, I'm guessing this is her Ants and Cousins, which is a great like family tradition um, and a fun thing to remember. Next up, we have a water 
Color and Ink work um, by Dina Walker, known as Dominique Christina, writer, performer, social activist, 2020. As the title, title states, Christina is a writer, performer, and social activist. She holds five National Poetry Slam titles in four years. Her work is greatly influenced by her family's legacy in the civil rights movement. Her aunt Carlotta um, is actually one of the nine students to desegregate Central High School in Little Rock, Arkansas, and is a Congressional Medal of Honor recipient. What I love about this show is it's all media, so we get fun things like this, which is a stained glass work, and we can play where we display it. So, of course, our um, Lena, our exhibition curator, decided to hang it in front of a window so we can get that great play of light coming through the glass pieces. This is called Namaskar by Brooke Kavara. This is 2020. Namaskar is a traditional Indian greeting or gesture of respect. It is made by bringing both palms together before the chest, the face or chest and bowing. Next up, um, we have again a double stacking. On the top is a work by Kelly Woody. She is actually um, the one of the recipients of the fellowship award, specifically the merging artist for this next round of fellowship artists at RAM. So she will have a solo exhibition with the other fellowship artists in 2023, um, starting about August next year. Um, this particular work is called Waisin Anki. Um, on her Instagram account, Woody explained her submission into the exhibition as um, intricate paper cutouts that feature brightly colored flowers and birds that have been a popular folk craft in Poland since the 1900s. I had a fun time doing research for this piece and learning about Polish arts and crafts. Below it we have a piece by Pratika Chowdhury called Dorothy's Story 2020. This is color, pencil, and gesso on panel. Next up, we have a piece by Veronica Gagliano Avercamp, Macedonian Slippers, 2022, in acrylic paint. Veronica is often a teacher at Wisdom. She teaches a variety of classes. Some are palette knife painting, which I'm thinking she used as part of the technique for this piece, if not all. Um, for this piece, she copied um, you, her her Baba Vasa's slippers, her Macedonian slippers, to create this piece. Which if you have an Instagram, you can find her on there, Full, full Moon Vintage, and she has a picture of her, um, the original slippers that she styled these after, which is pretty fun to see the similarities. Next up is Karen Mathis, When We Were Kinder, 2022. Um, this is Found Newspaper and Photographs. The top work is by Sabina, who is another one of Ram's staff members. She works in the education department. Um, this is Matrushka, 2022, India ink and watercolor. Sabina was born in Poland, um, and which you can find Matrushka dolls, which is a nesting doll. This one is stylized with um, tattoo-esque designs. Sabina herself loves tattoos, so she thought that was a great representation of her and her heritage. By, by Todd Crewall, um, called Claret Bouquet, 2022 color pencil, um, and he, he added to 
um, a piece of his brother's work, John Crewall, who um, was quite well known with this area, and we actually have a lot of John's work within our collection. Um, so this was a great homage to him um, and his family. Next is a work by John W. Terhart, Red Shoes, 2022, Ink and Watercolor. Next up, we have a triptych by Kiefer Liddell Waterman, who is Ram's chief exhibition preparator. This piece is called We Were Born Beneath the Waves. When I asked him about this piece, Kiefer explained it's about the cultural importance of water. And he says, as a waterman, I am interested in the importance of water, the journeys across water, and the moments near and in water we all share. He created each of these pieces using um, materials that he found in the trash. Next up, we're going to look at a pretty exciting collaboration um, project that you actually can add to as well if you come into Worcester. Um, so this is sparkling togetherness and tradition. SPARK is a free cultural engagement program for people with memory loss and their care families. These programs are held monthly at Rams Worcester Museum. Each program offers a unique mix of engagement focused activities explored through visual art, conservation, sensory stimulants, creative writing and poetry, music, the art of movement, and hands-on art making. So for this show, um, our Spark members created a family recipe board, a chalkboard, featuring each family's favorite food traditions with recipes from various heritages. We encourage visitors to take a picture and try these recipes at home or to draw a picture on this board of your favorite family food, write a story about a family dinner, or tell us about your favorite family recipe. You can share your, the, the recipes that you created from our board using um, Instagram and the hashtag RamSparkRecipe. We have um, markers conveniently located to the left on a podium for you to come include your pieces as well. And then I also would just like to note, um, to the right of the board, we have an iPad. This showcases all of the artwork that is upstairs, um, which is, again, the RIG Jury Exhibition. Um, since Wisdom is an old house museum, we don't have an elevator to ha have the historical relevance of the house. Um, so this is a way that people who um, can still view the artwork upstairs. All right, so now we're going to move into our first main gallery. To the left. Your left, my right. <laughs> so this first piece here is by Tom Hoffman, My Inner Child 2019, Oil and Board. Tom is one of the teachers at Wusum, and he actually also was the juror um, for Reg's juried exhibition this year. He explains that this piece is a self-portrait of himself, but still his childlike tendencies. All right, next we have Sofia Chiodo, Nordic Italian 2022 Lino Cut. Next, we have Alice Rossman's Il Formaggio 2022 Transparent Watercolor, which, of course, Il Formaggio means the cheese, <laughs> which I don't know if she intended this, but it's quite apt for Wisconsin. This is a pretty fun, um, different 
style for her simply because she usually creates very large works. Um, this is very small for her. You will often see her work in watercolor Wisconsin. Next, um, on this double stacking, we have on the top a piece by Julia Taylor, Saturday morning at Coffee Makes You Black, 2020 watercolor. Next up, Christine Bone has made Justine, 2022. Really fun frame on this. Um, so it's the whole piece is made using watercolor, buttons, lace, paper, and a found, found brooch. So as you can see the frame, she, I believe, glued all of these buttons to create a very interesting pattern. I can only imagine how long that took her to find the buttons and then to glue them. But it created a really interesting effect you can see here. And in the middle part, she used watercolor to paint this image of three people. On the wall, then, we have a work by Avni Shah. It is untitled 2021. It's a Raku fired earthenware and found dried flowers. We didn't get too much 3D work for this show this year. This is the start of it um, and the, the fact that it's not a painting. And then we're going to Tyler's done looking at that piece. We're going to look at a couple more 3D pieces. Underneath the stairway, we have a couple petals still set up as well as a hanging piece. The first case we're going to look at is a case of jewelry. We'll go for the, the piece in the front first. We have Theodore the Bug made by Jane Devine. Uh, this is 2021, made with silver, brass, jasper, and found silver earrings. I just love the name of this piece. <laughs> it just seems like a friend. Um, and then in the back, we actually have um, some earrings that I made. Um, I call them nasturtiums, and they are made using fabric and then I embroidered the nasturtiums on there. Next to that we have a necklace um, made by Hanukkah Abels who is one of our front desk staff um, at our museums. This was made in 2019 using glass seed beads, shell, blue pearls, and a found pearl buttons. And then we have a work that isn't necessarily um, a piece of jewelry, but it's this cute little object by Leslie Perino called Tea Drinker 2022. Um, this is vitreous enamel on steel, and the decal was of an original photograph in China paint. Hanging in the piece, or hanging in the middle here, we have a work by Penny Nichols called Looking Glass Emergence. 2022. There's a lot of different things that were used to create this piece. So we have a found lantern, cardboard, paper, toothpicks, stickers, graphite, shells, artificial foliage, vinyl, metal, cork, a found hat, and fabric. It was kind of exciting when um, Penny dropped off this piece. She gave us the opportunity of either setting it down on a counter or hanging it. Um, and we loved the hanging option because it created a different variety within these displays. Then the last case over here is two ceramic pieces. On the left, we have a piece that is made by another RAM staff, um, Justin. He is one of Wisdom's General Museum Assistants, which we're actually hiring for right now if you'd like to join our fun family. This is called Adam's Ale Interpretations of Lake Michigan. 2022 glazed stoneware. And then up in the back, we have a work by John Klausmer, vase 2020, and it is pit fired earthenware. Pit firing is always pretty exciting because it creates these different kind of colors and dimensions on ceramic without having to use any glaze. 
Next up, we have a photograph by Renee Amato, um, La Veternera, 2022. Um, this is a digital inkjet print on aluminum. Renee was actually one of our fellowship artists from this last go around, so you maybe recognize his name um, and his style. Next up, we have a work by Gerald Bellant, um, who is a past fellowship artist himself, but several years ago now. This is called Myself as Rembrandt with Injured Eye 2022, and it's made using acrylic paint. Um, Bellant cites that he's often greatly influenced by the old mastered painters, including Rembrandt, as represented in this painted painting, where he painted himself in a similar style to a self-portrait Rembrandt created of himself. Um, Bellin considers the ornate gold frame as part of the work. Then going off the fun idea of ornate frames, we have Janet Mrazix, Holy Mother of God. Mrazix explained in a statement, My ethnic heritage is Armenian. Through history, the primary defining characteristics of being Armenian is being Christian. I have always wanted to paint an icon, a religious painting, so this exhibition gave me the opportunity. This is an icon painting of the Holy Mother of God, Mary. The writing at the bottom of the painting is the name using the ancient Armenian alphabet. Next, we have a diptych by John Falk, Stand and Figures, 2022, created using acrylic paint. All right, then moving on from that, we have Lisa Englander, another staff at RAM. Um, you will often find Lisa near the museum store. Um, this is called Saul Steinberg and Me Illuminations. On her piece, she stated, everyone is influenced by their past as well as, as I as well. I grew up in New York City and stayed there for college. New Yorkers have a unique perspective about themselves and their place in their world. No better example than the 1975 New York Magazine illustration by the artist Saul Steinberg. Steinberg's perception of the city when he emigrated represents it as the focus of his world with everything else out of focus. Manhattan was his world. For me, it was Brooklyn, a poor stepchild to Manhattan. Steinberg poked fun at the provincial nature with which New Yorkers perceive the rest of the country. Food was my world. My grandmother was a phenomenal baker and my grandfather a renowned butcher. I represent my early childhood with an illustration of foods. In 1979, I immigrated to Wisconsin, which became the focus of my world. My grandmother cried when she realized I was moving to Milwaukee, Minnesota. We're going to go a little bit in towards um, the stairs. You'll get a sneak peek of another show that we have here called Ram Showcase, Focus on Glass, which features four glass artists from Ram's collection. This first piece here is by Patricia Gutenberg. Um, it is called Intertwined, an homage to Steve Rise. Gutenberg dedicated this work to longtime Worcester art teacher Steve Rise, who passed away recently. In an artist statement, Gutenberg stated, This began as an assignment in one of Steve's painting classes. In February, I got this painting and another one out and started working on them. Growing up, I lived on 12 areas that bordered a stream with what we call the lost jungle. This reminds me of that little piece of nature. Next, we have two works. The first is Kay Christensen. Um, titled A Lifetime of Art 2022, made with watercolor.
Next, Lisa Martin, The Birds of Forest Lane, 2022 watercolor. The next three pieces are a fun play on reds, <laughs> which I just happened to notice. We have two large red pieces with a black and white one in the middle. This first one on the left is created by Stephen Misavi, Casa Roja 2020, oil pastel on board. This feature is, um, like the name suggests, a place called Casa Roja that Steve's friend actually took a photo of this uh, and he copied it to create this lovely example. We then have Trisha Blasco's Memento Mori 2021 and it is a woodcut on fabric. Trisha is our uh, curator of education at Rams Worcester Museum. This piece, um, the title it stands for Latin phrase knowing remember you must die and she created in remembrance of a family member. We have a um, event yearly called Steamroller and she made this large woodcut at that event where we take an actual steamroller and press images onto fabric. That's happening in August. I highly encourage you guys to come to it. I will be there. It'll be a fun time. Next to it, we have another large red work by Megan Burke McGrath called New Year Destination 2021 Acrylic Paint on Canvas. And the last three works in this gallery, we have a gathering here. Um, the first on the top left is by Carol Pearson. It's called Italian Doll, or I'm sorry, Italian Idol 2022, and it's a digital inkjet print. Below that, we have a work by Nancy Nider. These are my people, Girl Scouts. 2022, oil on canvas. And finally, to finish off this trio, we have Fred Stein's The Pinnacle. 2022 oil pastel and marker on a digital inkjet print. So Fred took a photo and then he filled in the color using the oil paint and a marker to create this really fun image. All right, and then we missed a section of the hallway, so we're gonna go back. <laughs> So starting here, <laughs> we have um, two lovely red flowers. On the top, we have Pat Gilbert Slovak Folklore Flower 2021 Watercolor. This little section, it takes a lot of inspiration from nature and flowers. Below, we have Anne Hankus. Scandinavian Roots 2022 acrylic paint on paper. Following on the top, we have Mary Ann Bresnahan, Time Equals Courage, Bohemia. 2022 watercolor.
Below is Mary Dwyer's Homage to Ukraine 2022 watercolor. Of course, this is speaking to the Ukrainian war. Next, we have Nancy Greenbaum, Japanese Garden 2021, and this is a digital inkjet print and gouache. Then we have Mary Kors, our ancestral, ancestral castle in Ireland, 2019 watercolor. Playing off these lar our smaller works, we have PM Fallon's Miss West Through Miami Eyes, 2021 watercolor and ink. Next up, we have a, um, a last double stacking. We have Paula Tuhi's Desert Memory 2022 acrylic paint. Beneath Paula's, we have Jennifer Zygmunt's Autumn Reflection 2020 Oil Pastel. You can see this piece features two Canadian geese swimming on top of the, a river, I'm presuming, or maybe it's a lake. Following, we have Suzanne Shackleman's Under the Cypress Trees 2022 watercolor. And then lastly, we have Steve Horvath's Rippled Water Reflection, 2021 Watercolor and Gouache. As Steve was dropping off his piece, he told me he took inspiration um, from the reflection part of this exhibition titles and created a reflection within this water's reflection. But I want to thank you guys so much for staying tuned in to all of the great pieces in this exhibition. Like I said at the beginning, this show runs until August 13th. We have two other exhibitions here. Upstairs, we have the Racine Art Guild Jury Competition 2022. That closes at the same time, August 13th. Then we also have our collection show, which is Ram Showcase Focus on Glass. That one extends until February, so you'll have a lot of time to see that. Um, but before we go today, does anyone have any questions? Let us know in the chat, and I will try my best to answer them. All right, if we have no questions, um, Wisdom is open from Wednesday to Saturday from noon to 4. We are a free museum, so I hope you come down and check out this great art. Thank you. Bye.